Hey, this is Prince Iris with DIYSF.org, and today I'm going to talk to you about some mushrooms that I found in my garden. So, first off, once Saturn gets out of the way, um, I came out last night right before I, I, I gardened. Uh, usually I like to come out here at night um, and at least water some of the plants that my irrigation um, either uh, I don't want specifically to water on an everyday occasion like my peppers I like to hand water every once in a while and um, I'm having a little bit of a problem with the irrigation at the end of uh, my my line uh, to my tree collards and my kale um, but uh, when I came out last night I saw that these guys um, it's this dark mass which uh, we'll do some close-ups in a second um, just start showing up behind this little stone lion and this rotting log that we kind of put back here um, so I kind of wanted to go over uh, the benefits of having uh, or like the surprise uh, of having mushrooms uh, pop up in your garden um, one it means that the moisture of the soil is actually uh, pretty beneficial for them uh, for the spores of the uh, fungus uh, to sprout and kind of fruit because this is actually the fruit of uh, the fungus. Um, I consulted a couple of books and little resources that I acquired. Um, this is a little uh, mushroom, an introduction to familiar North American species um, that I actually found in a box on the side of the road. Um, and then at the uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Bound Together, uh, the anarchist bookstore. Um, I, I got Radical Mycology. And this is actually how to cultivate your own mushrooms, including uh, some fun mushrooms uh, and edible mushrooms as well. Um, and then this is just like a kind of a picture guide and color guide to the different mushrooms that you might find on either hiking or um, in the actual land itself. Um, so, consulting this, I'm pretty sure that these guys are just a common uh, brown uh, straw mushroom that, uh, that grows uh, in this area. Uh, it's pretty common. It's not edible. I wouldn't suggest eating it. It is a little bit on the upset tummy, uh, making yourself vomit kind of, a, kind of a reaction to them. Uh, but they are good, and they are a good indicator that um, the soil is working properly. The mycorrhiza, which exists in the soil, um, has a good balance with the root systems and and uh, basically these guys are pretty good uh, as a functioning uh, live compost what they're doing is they're breaking down the organic compounds that exist in the soil um, and actually uh, turn them into something that's absorbable to your plants uh, in in the form of nutrients and minerals um, so they're good um, I would say this is a good thing and not to worry too much about it um, I would I wouldn't pick them off. I've, I've did a little bit of online kind of surfing and, and saw that a lot of people are concerned about them and some people were even saying to pick them off or whatever. I mean, I guess if you don't want a, the sight of mushrooms in your garden and some people find that unattractive, then, you know, maybe, sure, go ahead and do that. But they're actually really good for your garden and hopefully if it does spore, um, it can pass on its spores to other things. There, there's no bad thing about uh, mushrooms growing in your garden it helps unlock a lot of like organic compounds that aren't absorbable specifically to the plants but are absorbable um, once the mushroom breaks it down so definitely a good thing um, all right well I guess that's it we're gonna do some close-up shots on it and kind of see um, more than likely what happened we have the rotting log which is pretty much uh, ideal <laughs> uh, organic compounds uh, that are rotting and decaying. That bacteria have already started to kind of rot. Um, there's sow bugs and definitely some native newts. Um, and uh, at once was slugs uh, breaking this down already and kind of making it a home. Um, we've uh, put some iron oxide uh, pellets down just to detract the slugs away from a lot of the strawberries and the chocolate mint. Um, but mainly, specifically, it was our zucchini and squash plants and the kale that I had over here before I transplanted them that were getting really attacked by the, by the slugs. So we tried our hardest to kind of uh, put some areas like spotted uh, iron oxides to, um, you know, organically kind of get those guys to not want to be around. Um, so they either moved to neighbor's gardens or um, they just continued on their journey <laughs> through the cosmos. Um, anyway, so 
that's mainly what's going on probably that they're liking over there um, and then probably the the moisture retention that's underneath the stone uh, lion um, they probably like that as well um, and that I've been watering pretty much uh, regularly just because this it is San Francisco and the soil does like to retain a lot of the moisture but um, sometimes it does kind of the sun beats down and it does kind of dry out so I do like to come out and uh, hand water or I mean my irrigation works pretty well but in cer certain areas especially since a lot I mean my tomatoes are fruiting now um, I like to give it a little bit extra water, um, at least until the most of the fruits on the tomato plant are, and a lot of the other plants have actually developed. Once they've developed into their full shapes, then I kind of like to stress them out by not watering as much, um, and then I'll switch specifically to the irrigation. Um, anyway, so I hope this was informative, and uh, I'm Prince Cyrus with DIYSF.org, and uh, you can do it yourself, man. Yeah.